Oh, come on, baby. Let's look alive, people. You know who it is and you know what it is. This is J-Rock. And J-Rock is here to check out some Death Stranding gameplay. How to kill or avoid the BTs. Or as J-Rock like to call them, the supernatural Rudy Poos. Let's check this out and see how this goes. What J Rock is cooking? Finally, J Rock has come back to you too. What is happening in the net with the millions? of J-Rock's fans. You are here with J-Rock to check out and witness how to kill or avoid BTs in Death Stranding. Now look, J-Rock says this. When I first heard about the game, saw the game, saw the trailers, I was sitting there thinking to myself, not really a game that I'm really interested at all in playing. However, J-Rock will admit it has piqued my interest to see more. Now, I'm not going to go out and spend $50 or $60 on a game to play this game. No. Ain't happening. Or at least not yet. Or it might get to my game fly queue list. I don't know. But I, just, I will say this. It has piqued my interest. So, if I see more and I like more, who knows? J-Rock might get it. But for now, let's check out and see how to kill and avoid BTs, or as J Rock likes to refer to him, the supernatural Rudy Poos. Death Stranding is a mysterious game, but one thing you'll learn early on is that the nightmarish BTs are not to be trifled with. These shadowy figures can appear out of nowhere to ruin your day, and even once you have the tools to fight back, you can still have a tough time. We've broken down the best ways to detect, avoid, escape, and defeat BTs in Death Stranding. As a general rule of thumb, BTs are always found in areas where time fall rain is present, mostly found in narrow valleys or mountain passes, and always at the site of large ruins where people die. Remember, Sam's condition only allows him to sense BTs. This comes in a two-fold slowdown. Once at the edge of their territory, where you start to see grass rapidly grow and die, and again when you start getting close to BTs, where your Audra Deck sensor will become active and spin into gear. Well, Only by remaining cool. still will you be able to get a glimpse of shadowy figures floating around. There I call it the if jabroni detector. If you're from you'll have only your wits to guide you. If you absolutely have to enter a region teeming with BTs, let your objective guide you. If you simply need to pass through the region, it can sometimes be better to stick to the edges of their territory. That way, if you do get noticed, you're less likely to get surrounded when trying to escape. However, if your order requires you to collect cargo from their area, you'll need to take things slow and try to avoid central areas where more of them are likely to be. The object deck sensor revolves through a few different modes to tell you how close you are to danger. Keep a close eye on it, as you'll often need to react at a moment's notice or risk getting spotted. At the longest range, your object deck will simply face the current BT with its hand outstretched, occasionally blinking to indicate that you are fairly far from it. You can use this as a radar to know where not to move. Your scanner is always facing the closest BT. During this stage, you should be able to move as normal, so long as you aren't sprinting or gunning it in a vehicle. Once the object deck begins blinking more rapidly, you'll know that you're getting closer to the BT it's currently targeting. At this point, you should be crouching at all times, as moving any faster can risk detection. At this range, you should be able to stop and see the outline of the nearest BTs. When the object starts to spin rapidly, that's a sign that you're extremely close to the BT in question. This doesn't guarantee you'll be spotted, but unnecessary noise will most definitely get its attention. Make sure your stamina is at full, because now is the time to hold your breath by holding R1, and continue to crouch walking away from the BT until your object deck goes back to the previous mode. Then let go of R1 to draw in a breath. If done correctly, the BT will be too far away to hear. If, despite your best efforts, a BT becomes aware of your presence, you'll hear a dramatic musical stab, your object deck sensor will turn orange and point, and large footprints that splash tar into the air will start moving to the location where you were heard. This doesn't always mean you'll get attacked. If you're fast, you can scoot or climb away from the location, and as long as you're outside the area it detected you, you might be able to continue on as it looks around. If you're still around when the footsteps reach you, get ready to fight for survival. 
Black tar will envelop an area around you as bodies emerge to drag you down. You'll need to alternate between hitting square to knock away each body, while also keeping your balance by holding L2 and R2 when needed. If you should run out of stamina and fall down, things will get a lot worse. So be sure to punch only as needed, then try to run to the edge of the tar. If you get close and see them coming up again, try jumping for a quick hop to freedom. If you manage to get out of the tar, you can quickly sprint away before the BT comes looking for you again. If avoidance is unlikely and confrontation inevitable, there are a few tools you can use to take the fight to them. But given your limited resources, they should usually be a last resort. While they can't outright kill the ghosts, X Grenade Zero from showering and X Grenade One from urination can be thrown in a BT you've spotted to make them run away for a bit. Did he say and X Grenade urination? Two from Fecal Matter will stun BTs with a larger cloud for a greater amount of time. But they are only really good for quickly moving past a dangerous area. The only real way to deal with BTs is with blood-based weaponry, like the hematic grenades you'll obtain near the end of Episode 2. Though it requires your own blood to use, a grenade can cause one or even several of the spectral BTs to get caked in red and float up into the air before vanishing, leaving behind chiral crystals. Once you advance into Episode 3, you'll be able to start accessing more weapons, including anti-BT guns that fire special blood-infused bullets. But again, they require your own blood to work, so prep for these encounters by having extra blood packs equipped so you don't bleed yourself dry. The bolo weapon can also bind and stun BTs long enough for you to bypass them, but it doesn't deal any damage. If BTs overwhelm you before you can dispatch them with blood weaponry, you'll be dragged through the tar. But this isn't game over. You'll be thrust into a sort of mini boss fight, where you're taken to the center of the BT area as it's transformed into a large tar pool, and a large BT known as a catcher emerges to kill you. The shape of these animal-like creatures can vary, but you'll need to act fast or risk defeat. Unlike regular BTs, it will take more than one hit from a blood-based weapon to defeat them. Instead, you'll want to get to higher ground as soon as possible to get out of the tar and their attack range. Once on temporarily safe ground, use your Audra Deck scanner to figure out where they'll emerge from the tar and either throw chromatic grenades or use anti-BT guns to start dealing damage fast before they submerge again. The catcher will regularly ram into your high ground and cause it to sink, so to fight effectively, you'll need to constantly be on the move and plan your escape path in advance so you don't get stuck in the mud. Be sure to ping your scanner too, as you may find extra weapons or gear in the mini-boss arena. If you run out of ammo, you still have some options. Be on the lookout for other online players. They aren't actually in your game, but you can see these white figures bearing names of people you may have seen using their equipment, and they'll automatically lift up items like hematic grenades or extra blood bags to toss your way. However, if things are too dangerous and ammo scarce, you can always run for the edge of the catcher's territory. Look on the map and you'll see the black ring, and you can plan your escape towards the side closest to you. If you whittle down the health of the catcher, or just escape their massive territory, the battle is over. Defeating them will earn you a lot of chiral crystals, but either victory or escape will always clear the area of any time fallen BTs, allowing you to traverse the area without worry for a long while. This is especially important when delivering valuable cargo, as sometimes it's better to clear an area before starting a big order so you don't run the risk of damaging your cargo. For more on Death Stranding, make sure to check out our full review of the game, as well as 29 crucial tips to help you get started right off on your Delivery Man adventures. If you have any tips... Uh-huh. So in order to lay the smack down on these supernatural Rudy Poos, I gotta get a, I gotta get a syringe and take blood out of J Rock's own arm. Why can't I just take the people's hand, just like this, turn it over, just like this, raise it up like I'm about to be sworn in to be the people's president, and commence to lay in the smack it down on their candy ass. Maybe because they're not real. Maybe it's all in your head. Thought about that? Anyway. I think if I knew exactly how this Death Stranding event occurred, like what what it caused, where it came from, what was the impact of it, m more than what I've seen, it might pique my interest even more. Because I'm the type of dude, I need to understand the point like one of the reasons I love the game the division so much I understand the point you're not just running and gunning and shooting no you're trying to restore order that has happened as a result of a virus and of course you know when martial law takes place and people get guns and stuff you know folks go crazy but this could end up being a 
Horizon Zero Dawn situation. I first saw Horizon Zero Dawn, I, Dawn, I was like, cool concept, woman with a bow and arrow fighting robot animals, but what's the point? Then the more I saw it, the more I got interested. Then I was like, eh, probably not going to buy it. Doesn't really pique my interest. Then I started to see more and more. Eventually I went out and got it. Played it. And I was like, man, this game is a lot better than I thought it was. Could this be another Horizon Zero Dawn? Who knows? But I got to see more. Post your comments down below. Let J-Rock know what you think of this game. If you appreciate it and enjoy J-Rock's reaction, make sure you hit that like button, you subscribe, and you share. J-Rock's trying to get to 1 million subscribers. Need your help in order to get there. So please, comment and share this video. Got a Facebook fan page you can go to. If you got a video you want J-Rock to check out, post it there. The link to it is down below. If I choose your video, J-Rock will give you a shout out in front of the millions of J-Rock's fans. Also, hit that bell so you can be notified that it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until we meet again. If you're smaller, what J Rock is.